Hi everyone, I'm back with part 10 this time of the Honda CB500 race bike build. So it's finally starting to actually take shape and actually look like a bike at long last as you'll see in the uh, video shortly. So I've got a lot to get through as always, um, I'll jump straight to it but yeah hopefully you'll enjoy it and I'm very close now to being able to see the bike finally start and actually be able to give it a test ride as well. If this is the first time you've seen one of my videos, check out my playlist on my channel because there's all the other videos from the build up to this point so far. Right then, so I'm just doing the brakes for the back now. So the guys at Hell sent me some free brake hoses, which I'm quite pleased about considering, well, I suppose it's like a sponsorship if you like. Considering I'm not like a professional racer and that. So yeah, that's what color I wanted. I just went with some silver ones this time. So I've got the option now of either silver or red ones. So anyway, massive thanks to them for sending me these. So I'll get them put on the bike and uh, yeah, get them set up. It's nice that they do stuff like this though, because like I said, I'm not obviously not, not, not a pro racer. There's far more important people racing than me. And everything like this just helps keep the cost down a little bit, doesn't it? So yeah, quite pleased with that. I'm just gonna test fit this basically and see if I can get it to sort of sit in the right place. I think on this it's supposed to sit, there's like a bracket that's normally here, which goes into these two bolts on the back of the rear brake, but a lot of people don't bother putting them on because it's just a pain in the ass when you try to change the wheels, which, you know, when you switch your tires over, it's quite, quite frequently from the west to the dries. So there's a hole here and I'm gonna see if I can maybe get a clip or something just to hold that in place so that that's not moving around too much and flapping about. Uh, let's try to put this one on here. So obviously that's kind of going that way. If I get a clip or something to hold that in place there, I'm, sure, I'm assuming that's what you're meant to do. And then on that side, once that tube's on, it'll hopefully just sit in front of it like that and it's nipped down and the tube can, like say, go up here. I think, it, I think I'll probably put it to about here actually and then just put something across, but I'll figure that out afterwards. So I'm going to move on to the front now. Yeah, well, spinning freely. Good. So I'll nip these up later on. I'm just going to route all the lines through and then I'll sort all the uh, torque settings out afterwards. I think that's in an okay position. So it's routing down through obviously. Uh, could potentially get stuck in between there I'm guessing. Right so I checked with one of the other lads who races and how he did his and as always <laughs> he's right. So I think that's a better line than what I had it. Um, so yeah, so it comes up the side. It is sticking out a little bit, but I can obviously tweak that and pull it in. I'll put, I won't have a flipping crappy little wrap there. I'll put one of those P clips on there. So a proper clip to hold it into place. I'm guessing that's why he has these holes pre-drilled. So it's the lad who designed these. Obviously he's thought of everything. <laughs> so yeah, I'll put a little P clip in there and I think that should be all right now. Once that's obviously fixed in place, tighten that up. I'll start having a look at trying to get this bled up then. Start putting some brake fluid in. Right, for the number board, I'm just making a, oh, I've just made a template look out of cardboard that fits the shape of the board. And I've done that so that there's three bolts. There's one about there, and then there's two up the top somewhere like that. Now obviously trying to guess it's quite hard to do and I've got one shot, so I don't knack my board up. There you go. That seems about, well, it looks symmetrical at a glance, put it that way. <laughs> I don't think anyone's gonna be that asked about how symmetrical this is when I'm going around the track. So that looks about right. I'll, uh, I'll use that as the guide and I'll draw the holes onto this piece. Seems to have gone all right, that. Fairly even, so. Anyway, next after that, obviously, we'll be getting some sort of numbers on there and design, but 
it's quite nice to see. It's quite nice to see the bike have its have a face <laughs> instead of just looking at bare wires all the time. For the front fender, it's going to go on that way, so the longer piece at the front, the shorter at the back. But I have this. Oops. That's one of the brackets that goes inside it, and that's uh, basically it's a fork brace as much as it is a bracket for the fender. So oh, I can squeeze in through. It's gonna go in between there like that. So just line it up on the bike. I think that's probably about right. There's like a slight ridge there where it kind of wants to sit. And I've just literally stuck a pen in and put some dots on either side. Got that bracket in, but it's not it's not particularly easy to fit this because in there there's a little piece that wants to go through the actual front fender. And then obviously the bolt will go through the fork leg and all the way through. So I've got that pretty much in the right place. And I've just done this side and you can see also in the right place. So I'm gonna take this out, drill them through. I think it's about 10 millimeters I need to drill for them. I'll get the back side in and then I can adjust the front and nudge it as I need to. All right, well, there's no going back now. That's 10 millimeter hole drilled and it's fitting in. So do the same on this side. Right, I'll um, put that back in now. It's going to warm it up again. So whilst I'm here, I'm going to mark up the back sides and drill them as well. And we're on. So that was probably one of the more difficult fiberglass pieces I've ever had to fit. And it's just because of that, the bracket I had to line up to the, to the fender, had to line up to the holes on the forks. So quite a few things to line up. I mean, the bracket's nicely made and it, uh, yeah, after a bit of faffing around, it, I got it to go on okay, but fits nicely now. Um, nice and stable and rock solid on there. All of a sudden, it's looking very blue at the front and then very red later later on. But like I said previously, once I have the uh, fairings on it, it's gonna look majority blue. So you'll have been looking at a bike that looks red for a long time and all of a sudden it'll change. It'll just look mostly blue with a hint of red. So, well, that's the plan anyway. Onto the belly pan unit now. And it should be easier to fit than the others, but it's, uh, they have a faff to get to. So I think I just need a couple of holes, or not a couple, a hole there for to tie, the cable tie it on. One there, one at the back, and then probably a couple on the sides. So I'll go around and mark them all up. Yeah, and then I can just drill them out and get that on. So hopefully it should be a fairly easy one. I'll stick that up for now. Yep, that's the belly pan on. Got to trim the end pieces off and that's it. Nice and easy. Can't wait I can get some stickers or graphics on there of some sort, look quite nice. That's not going anywhere now, want to nip the other side up. Right, I still haven't managed to get the uh, brakes bled up yet because I've noticed an issue with the uh, setup here. So I had this far too wide apart, which meant this was right over here. And the reason why I've got the issue is the banjo bolt here. There's no clearance for that to sit behind there and through there and underneath because you've got the yoke in the way and this tab is the issue. So the only way to get around that is to cut that off. And apparently that's a common thing that everyone has problems with. I think with having obviously the race set up and like the way it is. Well, the tab is no more. <laughs> that's it, done. So that went all right, to be honest. Managed to not get any stuff back in that uh, hole where the master cylinder is. It's back on the bike. I've uh, got that in the best position I think that I can. It's, I can still pull this cable in a little bit and with a P-clip that I'm gonna put through there. And I've now torqued up the caliper at the bottom. So the banjo ball's been torqued 35 newton meters. Same with the top. 
so I've got clearance. The only thing that I can't do is get to that bolt very easy, but worst case, I'll rotate that round if I need to undo these. Now I can finally sort this out. So I'm just going to take the top bolts out. So I've got this Motul brake fluid. Don't worry, it's not been opened for years or anything. It's the one I opened a couple of weeks ago when I rebuilt these in the first place, which you've probably seen. So if there's a fill line, yeah, I think probably there. Don't be any higher than that. It's quite full, but like I said before, as soon as I start pumping this down, and opening that uh, bleed nipple is going to drop and obviously I don't want it to drop too much the air goes back inside you can see there look the air is bubbling to the top so I just need to get that air to come out there's a massive air bubble underneath that little piece inside in that center and then look so you can see that fluid's moving and there's air bubbles coming through lever still feels like it's got nothing in it yet all right well next day i left i left this overnight with the uh brake lever tied into the handlebar just trying to encourage bubbles to come up and it has worked because now i'm not getting any coming up but what i've done also is i spoke to somebody who well he's he's one of the races on the cbs and he, he knows what he's doing and I asked him about, obviously saying about the bubbles and the issues I'm in trying to get these to bleed up. And he said just to leave the bleed nipple open at the bottom. I mean, normally what you do is your bleed nipple's closed, you pump the brake, you open it, flushes it through, close it, and then pump it again. And that cycle obviously just forces the fluid down the lines into the, the calipers and then obviously out the bleed nipple. But the problem with that is it was just nothing was happening. It was like, um, it just took ages and it was so very, very slow progress. We said, just leave the bleed nipple open and just pump it, the brake lever. It'll obviously just keep constantly coming out of the bleed nipple at the bottom. But it, what it does also mean is it's just flushing it through. So it's constantly pushing it down the line all the way into the piston and just basically cycling it through. And that's what you need to get the air out. I don't know if you can see, there's still air bubbles there, look, just generally bubbling through I'll try to go there probably a bit blurry but you can see the air bubble still coming through it's just a case of doing that really I'm just going to keep pumping it through I've stuck some tissue to try and stop it going everywhere but it, you know as long as it don't go all over your paintwork it's not really an issue so yeah I'll, pump, I'll keep pumping it through and I'll do a few cycles of this and then I will leave the lever tied to the bar again overnight and then check it tomorrow but hopefully that should be it then the lever's definitely firming up now, whereas before it was coming all the way back, I can't get it fully back now. So before I forget, I'll stick these pieces back in. Nice and clean. And then let's give it a bit of a spin and brake lever test. So spin the wheel. I don't know, you probably won't be able to see it, but there we go. Seems to be all right. Putting the copper ceiling washers on. I'll torque this down. Right, so I'm all ready for and set up for the rear brakes now. So as you can see, I've just zip tied that to the frame so that it stays upright as I'm pouring in fluid in the top and the bloody tip over. The tube wants to curl that way, so. I might have to do something like that. I'll try to think of something a little bit nicer when I actually guess, get it finished. They're all talked up. That's roughly the position that I'll sit in, apart from it'll attach the peak up there. Uh, yeah, let's give it a go. I'll fill that up first, start pumping it. I'll do like in the front one, I'll leave that open and just keep pumping it through loads, like a few cycles through, through the system and see if it uh, does it any quicker. Dropping quite a bit now there, look, as you can see. So I'll just gonna let that settle. Don't want to drop too far where you end up with air back in the system. You know, a bit more. Once again, it's raining really, really heavy in the garage. So apologies for the background noise. I'll try to edit it out as best I can, but it's, yeah, it's just been like 
the tail end of the storm and it's just torrential rain constantly. All right, well, when I said raining, I'm not joking, look at this. Holy hell. I think I'm nearly done with this now, so I'm just gonna go back to the usual pumping the brake and crack this bleeding plug at the back. I think I've got a better solution for keeping that in place because that's no good like that because it'll just, as you can see, when it starts moving, it's going to vibrate everywhere. So you tend to try and keep them in position. So I've got some of these, which are like electrical, um, I don't know what you call them, just fastenings. And I've just stuck a GoPro double-sided tape on it, which is real strong. And I want to put it underneath there like that and then just put a zip tie around it and keep it into place using just that clip that's there. There we go, so it's not perfect, but it's better than having a big cable tie around there. So that's not gonna go anywhere now. It's just held in place and a bit of movement in there in case it needs to move around, but nothing that it's gonna cause it to flap about. I think I'll have a go at putting the chain on next. So I've got DID one, did however you pronounce it, I don't know, DID I think it is. 525 pitch chain i would have preferred a 520 because it's lighter but we can't use them for thunder sport we have to use 525 so still a good chain though for what i need it for so let's have a look i'll have a go at sticking it on shortly i'll just get my chain tool out and then see how we get on putting this on all right then well i've got managed to get the chain on it's 108 links i think i mentioned that previously and initially i couldn't get it to fit because the wheels where the wheels sat much further back on the uh, swing arm. And so what I've been told all the race racing lot do is they use the 108 links with a 40, I think it's 42, I think that is. Yeah, 42 tooth at the back. And uh, yeah, they pull the wheel full, as full, fully forward as it will go to try and shorten the wheelbase, um, which in theory makes it easier to tip in corners and stuff like that. How much I'll notice, well, I've never ridden it, so I will, probably won't even notice any difference, if I'm honest, uh, until I obviously try it both ways. But yeah, I've got it as far forward as it'll possibly go. You can see there's some slack still there, so it will come back a little bit more, but it won't sit where it you know, normally would on a road bike, which is more in the middle sort of section. It'll sit a lot further to the front. So I've just put the link in just to double check that it does fit. Um, and I'm just gonna put some of the grease on it on the insides and then put the o-rings on put it in and start trying to press this face plate onto the front a bit more grease and just like i say word that into the actual o-ring so it's coated nicely so on the actual link itself and the pegs whatever they are and slide that down So I'll put some more on that side. Going everywhere but where I want it to go. <laughs> so the grease is supposed to help the plate stick to this temporarily. We shall see. And now I'll just get ready to press it on. Just wind that on to get it started. And I'm just gonna wind this and press the plate on. So it's a case of winding it against it until the plate is pressed into place. Right, I've got it set to press and you can see on there there's a little a little mark that the rivet will sit into there where it presses against. Back in. And then obviously there's a round piece that flares the actual rivet there as well. So I'll just put that on and then start trying to do the rivet. Uh, so I'm not sure how well you can see on that, but it's uh, pressing against the actual rivet head of one of these, but the hollow. And I'm going to attempt to press that in now and hopefully not crack it. I've just pressed them on lightly and I'm just measuring this. It's showing 5.52. So the standard one, which is that one there, is just slightly bigger than that. And this one I've got is slightly smaller than what I've got it set here. So if I aim 5.5, I looked online and for that chain, well, for a 525VX, this is the three version, don't know what difference that makes, but 
For the 55VX, you're looking at about around the range of 5.5 millimeter for these rivets. So that's what I'm aiming for. So I've got a little bit of squashing yet to do on those. And I'll aim for them to be a nice tight fit of that. And then hopefully that should be it. I've got my torque wrench to get more leverage on this bolt. I don't want to go crazy with it and put too much uh, tension on it, but also this to go over there, just to make it much, much easier to wind against each other. So that's a lot easier to compress that rivet now. Tiny bit more, yeah. I'm done and that's gone okay actually. So it's measuring at 5.6.2 on that one and that one as well. So that should be within the tolerance range. There's no cracks on those links. So none of that split, which is always what you're looking for. And hopefully that'll be okay. So that's the chain on and that's with it torqued up as you can see it's very near the front still uh, normally you probably expect it to this axle to be sat halfway or something like that um, but yeah not the case on these i might have that a touch tight but i'll just have to uh, have a look and see it has got slack in the middle there and i've talked up the front nut as well 55 and the rear one's 90 and that's that job done Putting the uh, throttle cable on now, so as you can see, I've, all I've done so far is just undo the housing and you can see there I've screwed in the new cable into where the accelerator cable is. So on this, on the race bikes, majority of people don't bother running the decelerator cable, which is the one on the bottom. Uh, you just have the one that runs all the way, obviously to the carbs and just, yeah, they rely on the fact that it should go close itself anyway. But um, I suppose the decelerator one is more of a safety than anything, but I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to use the accelerator one only, and yeah, we'll uh, try and have a go hooking this up. All right, the throttle housing's back on, and the cable's running underneath, through there, through the frame. There's a gap in the frame there, obviously, over the tops of this, so it doesn't obstruct anything. You don't want to obviously be obstructing this cable um by any pipe work or anything so over the top of it all over the top of that and then down to the back one there which is the accelerator that's the accelerator that's the decelerator i only need this one i've got to feed it down through there and then tuck it back up and round the pulley onto the uh onto the pulley down and like i say inside there right so i think i've got it in about the right position i'm just going to try and adjust the front piece so I've nipped that up there. I'm just going to have to tweak it a little bit and see. I don't know if you can see the cable down where my finger is there, but there's a, oh, there won't be a little bit of slack, but I'm just wondering how much to give it. So I'm going to just tweak it at the top here, tighten it up that way. I think the idea is you set it up here as best you can, and then you tweak the top to give it that little bit of fine tuning. But that seems to be you know, not too bad for the throttle play. And like I say, it's, it's snapping back as it should. One thing I did have to change today was I realized that this cable that I put on yesterday for the throttle cable was on the outside down here. And obviously that was a daft mistake because obviously when that bar turned that way, it would have pulled straight on that cable. So it has to go between the forks. So everything's basically going between the forks the right way, which I know sounds common sense, but yeah, I just didn't realize and I don't know, wasn't thinking properly. Anyway, it's on now and I've taken a lot of the slack out of there, so hopefully that'll be all right. I'll try it, like I said, I'll turn the bar side to side and see what happens, but that should be about, about right, I'd say. Today I'm looking at putting on these radiator panels now. So they've not been drilled, as you can see. And yeah, I'm gonna mount them to the bike. And as you can see now, it's actually starting to look like a proper bike. The white tape across there is going to have to modify this a little bit to get it to fit. So you can see there, this is why I didn't cut anything before I um, got it onto the bike. I pre-drilled the holes where I wanted it. And then now I thought this could be an issue where the shocks are and this uh, hanger for the exhaust pipe. So what I'm contemplating doing now is I've just drawn a straight line across with some tape and this is what others tend to do. You could just, notch that piece out there but then i have to notch that piece out there and that's just gonna look stupid 
So yeah, I think what I'll do is go straight line across there, not too tight to this so that it splits. I mean, that's just holding into the back, into the frame mount hole down there. And this, when I get to this piece here, what I'll have to do is cut it straight across and then just curve that in with the Dremel. So you should, it should look all right. It should hopefully won't look noticeable that I've cut it. But yeah, that's the thing that's the best option because then it gives me clearance for the, uh, the shock. And yeah, hopefully you won't see too much of the frame. I'm not bothered if you see the frame underneath. It's more, it needs to fit. It's got to come down a bit. On the tank, I've, you can see I've already fitted that one. So that's that side already fitted on. And it just screws into the radiator end where the tank was. Like I said previously, this is a tank cover and you can see a tiny bit of blue there, which, you know, is a bit annoying. I think what I'm gonna do is just put some black tape over that and just hide the dark blue so at least it looks black instead of blue. So there you go, you can see the side radiator panel on there. And there's a tiny bit of blue in there as well, which I'll also mask off. But like I said, I'm not too bothered about that. I've also masked this side off as well. So this is slightly different shape this side compared to the other side when the fiberglass has been made. So again, I'm just trying to match it as best I can. You can see I've got to come off at least, at least that amount, maybe more yet, but obviously leaving enough of a gap here so that I'm not splitting this when I tighten it up. I think the easiest way to do this is to put a Dremel cutting disc in, cut the line as best I can, and then I'll use some sandpaper and just rub it down using a block, like a block sander, rub it along the curvature of it, and hopefully that will give me a nice clean finish. As right, so I positioned it where I think it's about right, I'm just gonna mark some little dots somewhere I think it needs to be drilled. Right, so the bottom one's on, but this this piece across here is, is uh, just needs a slightly different shape. Because it's a tank cover, it's not fitting flush to the actual tank, which would have been underneath. So to get it in place, I think what I'm going to have to do is just take a tiny bit out of there. Just going to put some tape on just to try and give me a neater line to work to. So I'll get the Dremel out and I'm just going to take that down to close to that line and just try and keep it nice and neat across. Maybe take a touch out of there as well and it should sit better against that curvature there. a finished finished side panel i've got it as flush as i'm going to get it to that shape anyway like i said that's adding extra extra uh, bulk to it but i realized it was catching on this little bottle bit here and it was making this part sit out so i just trimmed a bit more of that good thing with this fiberglass and especially when it's gel coat is because it's done in blue when you fiber when you're sanding it down with a dremel or a cutting disc you can barely tell that it's being cut on the edge so it's uh, it's not as bad as you'd, you'd think. So yeah, that looks all right. Onto these pieces now. So this is quite a, a bit of a bigger job, I guess, because I've got to get cut nice and neat all along that. So that's it all cut down, both sides, and I've sanded it as you've seen. Hopefully that'll be enough now to try a test fit. Might need a bit more tweaking yet. I'm hoping this isn't far off though. I think that's about spot on literally just above this knot on here hopefully you can see it seems to be all right on there i'll try putting the bolts in and see uh see how far off i am hopefully not far okay right i've got got the tail well seat unit on it's still it's still a bit of a faff getting it on because the problem with fiberglass is once it's sat for a little while it starts to like sag and if it's been in my loft for like the last four months, so that that tail part, which should be tight on the top, has just been sagging open like that. 
um, and obviously it loses its shape so you end up trying to really force it onto the bike so anyway it's bolted there it's got one in there i need to change the bolts because they're crap um to get some nicer ones the white lines on it still are where i'm still debating taking a bit more out of there i'm not going to bother at the top because you can still see the blue coming through but that piece there i was thinking chop it down a touch so it's not screwing my frame it could probably do with a tiny bit more around here to be honest because it's rubbing against that socket there and it's going to eventually split that as you were uh, moving side to side on the bike but yeah i mean it's it's better than it was it was down here before it wouldn't even fit at all so i either could notch that out just that little piece so that it sits into there nicely or take a bit more out but i'll um i'll have a go at it another time i think I'll put the uh, foam seat pad on soon. This is the high seat, and I'm just hoping I haven't made a mistake by going for the high seat. I am tall, so when I'm sat on it, it I think to me, it will feel more natural sat a bit higher than it will sat scooped into the bike, but everyone else seems to disagree with me, <laughs> but we'll see. So yeah, I'll leave that tape on for now. Got both sides on the fronts as you've seen. Uh, it's the same this side where I was debating do I take a little bit more out of this bottom piece again Possibly might take a bit out of there just because it's scrubbing against that tank there Only that that edge there and taper it in And up the back of there. It's not so bad. I don't have the issue this side with the uh, With this uh, shock so that's why I was the, you know I didn't really want to notch it out on the other side if I can help it and then it's bolted in place there So this bit can be honest. And there we go. So next time you'll be able to see me put finishing touches to the bike. I do all the fluids and all the basic stuff to get it ready. I also do some designs for the actual fairing as well. So you'll see how I do that and how that turned out. Uh, fingers crossed I'll do a first fire up of the bike. So it'll be literally the first time I've heard it start, if it starts. And then hopefully the goal of all of that lot will be to get it to the ACU license where um, I'll go around Mallory Park for the, actually for the first time and try and uh, get my race license. So the next video coming up, you'll get to see the finished bike. So you won't want to miss that one. So hopefully see you next time. Cheers.